name is Miss Aisha Patel and I'm the Director of Post 16 at the Rosedale Hewins Academy Trust. I was born and bred in Hayes and therefore investing in local students is something that is so important to me and so close to my heart. I know exactly and firsthand the talents we have in the Hillenden Borough and how, with the right guidance and the right care, students from this area can shine bright. The philosophy of the Trust, and one that I fully believe in and I'm fully invested in, is that each young person should leave us in a better position from when they came. I'm so proud of the Po 16 offer at the Trust, and this is because every student is looked on as an individual, every student is treated based on their individual needs, and we ensure that wherever a student feels that they need to be, we get them there. I really hope that the Post 16 virtual open evening will demonstrate to you just what the Trust can do for you, and more importantly, how the Trust invests in its students and how we really are a community. We have four secondary colleges, each with its own individual identity and each with its own culture, yet we really are one big family. Virtual Post 16 open evening. My name is Miss Aisha Patel and I'm the director of Post 16 at the Trust. Whether you are already part of the Trust community, whether you are a student from a neighbouring school, or whether you are a parent, carer or guardian, it is my pleasure to host the director's speech. This speech is aimed at Year 11 students and their families, those who are in the process of deciding their next steps after GCSE. And by the end of this assembly, you will have clear definitions of the Trust Post 16 provision and what it can do for you. With over 29 subjects to choose from, we offer a rich and diversified curriculum that truly has something for everyone. Without further ado, let's delve into what we can do to add value to your educational career. The Assembly seeks to take viewers on a journey through Post 16, providing a comprehensive overview of the necessary steps that should be taken towards choosing the right pathway for you. Firstly, let's look at the Trust success story Year upon year, an overwhelmingly large percentage of our post-16 cohort progress to higher education. So 75% of our year 13s enter university, whilst the remaining 25% secured sought-after apprenticeships or undertook full-time employment. As you can see from the list of destinations, the Trust supports whatever career path students want to follow, whether this be law, medicine, mechanical engineering, acting or piloting. Many of our students attend Russell Group Universities and those pursuing apprenticeships are able to beat out fierce competition at companies like Hitachi and Accenture. We are extremely proud to support the aspirations of all our students, from the conventional to the creative, computer scientists, novelists, film directors, interior designers, accountants and gamers. As demonstrated by the destinations of our graduates, it's clear to see that the Trust believes in the individual goals of students and ensures that whatever their vision is, a pathway will be carved out to turn dreams into a reality. A brief glimpse into what our students are capable of achieving. You will notice that some members of the cohort graduate from the Trust with a minimum of four qualifications some with as many as five, across a wide variety of subject areas. At the Trust, we challenge our students to be the best versions of themselves, and we encourage an ethos whereby potential is not merely spoken of, but is actualized. Propelling our students to these heights, they're able to have a competitive edge when applying for their next steps, whether it be university, apprenticeships or employment. Our thinking stems from putting our young people in the best possible position for their futures. Now you've seen the end result, it's time to start at the beginning of the options process. Today marks the launch of the Post 16 virtual tour and from this point on, students and families should spend at least a week researching the options, using all the tools at their disposal, including this assembly, the virtual tour and the Post 16 prospectus, which is available via the Trust website and in our college reception areas. All application forms must be submitted online. This includes applications from inside the Trust and from students within the local community wishing to apply. The link to the application form can be found on the Post 16 page on the Trust website. 
Once all application forms are received, the options blocks will be created based on subject combinations chosen by applicants. This process is democratic and accommodates the majority. Interviews will then be held in the spring term. After Year 11 take their GCSE examinations, the students will attend a two-week bridging programme whereby they will sample post-16 lessons for all subject areas. The official enrolment process will commence on results date and subject choices for successful applicants will be confirmed. Students will then embark on their post-16 journey with the Trust in September. Choosing your post-16 options is an important decision and must therefore be taken with careful consideration. In the first instance, ask yourself these four questions. Which subjects do you enjoy learning about? Which subjects do you excel in and are likely to succeed in? Are there any particular subjects and grades you may need for your chosen study or career choices? Or how open do you want to keep your future study and career choices? Then you must take the time to carry out extensive research. We recommend the following five areas. Entry requirements, modules, teaching and learning style, assessment types, and career opportunities. Use the post-16 prospectus as a springboard to take you to subject specifications on examination board websites. Consider the modules on offer at the Trust to see if it is content you can foresee yourself enjoying. Reflect on if assessment types suit your preferred methods of examination. Post-16 calls for independent learners with intellectual curiosity and critical thinking. Consider whether you possess those skills or have the ability to refine them. Ultimately, the research must be deep and detailed. The decision is a commitment to academia and must be treated with measured thought. Your research should also take you to university websites and perhaps even ucas.co.uk, the UK's central universities and colleges admission service. Whilst a wide range of universities offer great flexibility, with a combination of diverse subjects suitable as entry requirements, there are some with specific conditions. This will vary from institution to institution, and it is worth understanding exactly what is required of you should you have a particular pathway in mind. If these are courses you may want to pursue in the future, please pay attention to both GCSE and post-16 grades necessary for entry. Through working backwards, this approach will help you to choose your post-16 courses wisely with your future in mind. As previously mentioned, the Trust is proud to offer 29 subjects to its post-16 cohort. The left-hand side provides an overview of all AS and A-level qualifications, while the right-hand side demonstrates our vocational offer via BTEC and Cambridge Technicals. Our curriculum is bespoke and addresses the interests and needs of our students. This range of subjects will allow students to branch off into their different areas of expertise while sharpening their independent learning skills, producing well-rounded and well-grounded young people. At the Trust, students entering post-16 must study four subjects. This can either be A-levels, BTECs, Cambridge Technicals or a combination of all three. Based on the choices made by students, the subjects will then be sorted into blocks A, B, C and D. Students must then choose one subject from each block. We endeavour to accommodate as many students as possible. It is important to note, however, that naturally not all subject combinations can be facilitated and therefore reserve options should be considered. provided are examples of typical post-16 timetables. As you can see, they are full of learning opportunities, both inside and outside the classroom. The coloured blocks indicate the different subject areas, and our two-hour lessons cover vast amounts of content and enhance our skills-based learning approach. Additionally, our study periods allow for students to form revision groups in order to benefit from different ideas and perspectives. Timetables are comprised of daily form time from 8.45am, weekly assemblies, lessons and study periods. 
Timetables will also consist of weekly meetings and bespoke workshops with our on-site mentors who work exclusively with the post-16 cohort. As a trust, collaboration is a central part of our ethos. At post-16, students will benefit from using all four college sites, having full use of all the facilities. Our overarching aim is to ensure that students become independent learners. This will provide our students with the lifelong skills necessary for not only their next steps, but in any professional environment they may enter. We want our students to be inquisitive, to be critical and to explore in their research and study. This will essentially come from stretching and challenging students on a daily basis, from effective questioning to student-led lessons to extended projects. We are proud that our colleges are home to several post-16 teachers who mark for the examination boards and who are committed to interactive learning. With so much to gain from a single day at college, attendance is crucial. It is expected that all students will maintain an average attendance of 98% for both face-to-face -face and virtual lessons. Post-16 students are also models for the younger year groups and should therefore set the standard of taking great pride in attending college. The Trust's post-16 students are leaders within their college communities. Their dress and appearance must therefore be appropriate to match the professional ethos of the Trust. The principles of the Uniform Code are that students will dress smartly and with the formality appropriate for business and educational workplaces. At Post 16, we truly believe in student-centred experiences that go beyond building a CV. In addition to the academics, the lives of our students must be enriched by self-investment, where students charge themselves with broadening their own horizons. Through a variety of extracurricular opportunities, such as webinars, workshops, work experiences, masterclasses, lectures, university open days and careers fairs, we ensure that our students participate in an array of adventures that have the purpose of enhancing their skill set. A testament to this ethos, we are proud that our students have successfully applied for experiences with companies like PwC, Microsoft, Dell, Hitachi, IBM, Barclays and Disney to name but a few. At the Trust, we endeavour to support students in finding themselves academically, socially and professionally. As is the standard across our secondary colleges, the post-16 are assessed six times throughout the academic year via a variety of mediums such as an initial suitability assessment, half-term assessments and trial examinations. This is in addition to assessments set by the examining bodies, such as written papers, coursework, performances and practical endorsements. Assessments are seen as checkpoints where teachers, students and parents guardians. With a layered approach, the secondary colleges provide at least six layers of internal pastoral support. In the spirit of collaboration, the staff body work together championing and empowering the post-16 students who are able to profit from the support of teachers across the Trust. From form tutors, to mentors, to subject teachers, to directors, to vice principals and to principals, the post-16 cohort have a wealth of resources at their disposal in this family-like community. Transitioning from Year 11 to Year 12 is an important step for any young person and therefore it must be a scaffolded process whereby knowledge and guidance are shared and then explored. As such, Year 11 students from within the Trust community will be taken on a journey via assemblies, a day of informative workshops, individual meetings with careers advisors, interviews and the bridging programme in the summer. This layered approach allows our students to gradually collect more and more knowledge, culminating in an informed decision. When there is symmetry between home and college, 
the layered approach exercised from within the trust extends outwards. Parents, carers and guardians are a key part of the trust's community and play a significant role in supporting the post-16 options process. There are several practical strategies that can be adopted to ensure that the decision made for the student is the right one. Reading, researching, having candid conversations with both students and teachers can all contribute to an informed conclusion. Should you need additional information about the Trust's post-16 offer, please do not hesitate to contact me via email. Alternatively, with college-specific inquiries, please use the displayed email addresses or telephone numbers. For queries relating to special educational needs and disabilities, please contact the Trust Coordinator via the provided details. Drawing the Director's speech to an end, I sincerely hope that this was an informative assembly that answered all of your questions about post-16 at the Rosedale Humans Academy Trust. I would like to leave you with a quote that will resonate with all of the Year 11 students within the local community. It has often been said that the way we spend our time defines who we are, and when used effectively, time will reward the persistent, the committed, the resilient and the responsible. In deciding on your post-16 destinations and subjects, it is so important that you take the time to read, research and reflect. The end goal is to make an informed decision based on secure and accurate knowledge. It has been a pleasure to walk you through the... Thank you all for listening and thank you for watching. Next, you will be taken on a different journey, the virtual tour where our subjects showcase what teaching and learning look like in practicality and how our provision can support your career choices. Without further ado, let's delve into the tour. So, you have aspirations of owning your own business. How are you preparing for that? Um, so I want to go into business and I want to occasion, eventually own my own business and maybe hopefully a restaurant. Um, I've been working with Parkside in the hospitality suite, um, doing, finding ways to make this accomplishable. I've looked into accounting, economics and business all at Salis. Um, the main problem I found is perfect competition. For there to be perfect competition, it must be crucial for the demand ATC to be equipped to e to be equal to each other. Sorry, um, and that can be very difficult in the market. Um, m mostly, always there's imperfect competition. This can be due to monopolies, rising power. There's markets out there which only have one firm working within it. Um, they often abuse their power as they can rise prices. They are pretty inelastic in the demand. Uh, they can rise their prices for people to pretty much have to buy at their price as there is no other choice to get into. Um, monopolies. Sorry, so that's really interesting. So ethics have to come into it as well then? Uh, yes, you have to be very smart in the way you run business. It can get very competitive and... It is very difficult out there. Mm. Um, again, with monopolies, they can. It's difficult to compete against them. Um, smaller businesses often miss out as they don't have much competition. Their prices are usually lower, um, and even if they do increase prices, demand will be pretty low, and their output would be higher, which means they'll be at a loss of profit. Thank you so much for your insight into post-16 economics, accounting, business and even hospitality which I didn't think related but you showed me that it did so thank you so much. It's my pleasure. What does employment mean to you personally? So employment to me means becoming a barrister so preparing myself for this role French has been crucial as the ability to speak another language will allow me to interact with a wider client base on a more international level in the future. Mm. Additionally, it will also allow me to take up various roles within the court, such as acting as an interpreter. Um, in regards to English history and politics, they all provide me with an academic springboard for the essay writing portion of being a barrister. Mm -hmm. English in particular will it's build my advocacy and confidence skills, while history and politics has given me a broader understanding on different political landscapes throughout different eras, which also further links to different judicial precedents and courts that allow me to like, 
it allows me to think what the judges, obita, dicta and um, ratio just said. Mm. And what about um, the law courts at Desalis? How, how does that help you to put, how, how does that help you? Oh, it's great. So instead of just doing theory, 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 as you probably usually do, you have a more practical focus. So it's not just, oh, just learning what it is, regurgitating what's in the book. You get a more practical understanding, you get to do mock trials, moot courts, you get to really have a feel for what the law actually is rather than just trying to cram it all. Mm, thank you. What does employment mean to you personally? When I apply the word employment to my own career, it means qualifying as a detective. Mm. I have carved this path for myself via studying law and criminology at post 16. It helps that our law courts mimic the environment and feel of a real case. And often we do mock trials, which help us apply our learning mm. about the criminal justice system. Criminology, psychology and sociology really help me understand the criminal behaviour and deviance alongside the significance of evidence and data collection, which is practical training for mm. my career. Mm. And what specific type of detective do you want to be? Do you know? Um, I think I want to work in the homicide. In the homicide, okay. Yes. And do you know anything about that, like what you have to do or what you have to, like do you know much about the career and how to get into it? Yes, I always read and mm. watch what is happening, mm. so I know when I go there, I know what I have to do. So for example, in sociology, what is something you could apply from what you learn in class to your career? Um, for example, in year two, we're going to study criminal behaviour, mm -hmm. which will help me understand more about why. Mm. So as a detective in, in, in homicide, do you have to study criminal behaviour or is it more, you know, like going to a crime scene and looking at the evidence and what, what is that, being a detective actually, what does that mean? Uh, it will help to study the criminal behaviour and give me a wider knowledge about mm. what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And it's helpful. It's helpful to know everything. Um, thank you for sharing your aspirations with me today. Um, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot about how you are using your current subjects as, like you said, springboards for your careers, which is exactly what you should do as pro-16 students. So thank you so much. Thank you. When you imagine yourself as an adult, what do you see? Because I study computer science and IT, I imagine myself um, working in the world of computers, learning about the intricate structure of IT, all the different databases, I, uh, TCP, IP, stacks, LAN, WAN. I'm bettering my understanding of building databases. Mm -hmm. um, this means that I could venture into cyber security, coding or even games development. Currently we're learning about programming languages, which means that I could one day build a game if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And then what are some of the things you're learning in class right now in computer science? Um, we're learning about programming languages. And, and what does that mean? It's the different languages used to write programming so, um, because it has to be translated between machine code and what a programmer can actually write. Um, yeah, that's what we're currently learning about. And what can you do with a programming language? What does it mean that you can do? You can write source codes for um, software and you can like program the computers to do certain tasks. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what else are you learning? What about in IT, in Cambridge Technicals, what are you learning? Um, in IT we were learning about customer, customer management. We were learning also about protocol layering. Um, what is we, that? Protocol layering is different protocols basically rules of when you're using IT and how things are meant to be done and happen. Mm -hmm. What are your career aspirations and how are you working towards them? Well, hopefully, uh, by the you know, near future, I will be an actor in Hollywood and we'll start about talking about my options. I'm currently studying art, performing arts and media and because of those three subjects I have found a, like a great you know, appreciation and love for acting and like learning about the amount of like effort and time and money it takes behind the scenes to create this finished product that you see in cinemas and on your TV screens is so kind of like mind-boggling because obviously as the audience you only get to see what's on screen but it, in media 
I would have never learned this if I didn't take it. It was honestly so, like, it opened my mind to many other, like, um, jobs. Like, obviously I said I wanted to be an actor, but I had an interest in directing and writing for a while because of my subjects. And um, how I'm working towards them is, uh, I am currently working with an organization called Arts Emergency. And through them, I have managed to be put on work experience and work placements uh, from the uh from film companies like the bureau which have worked in many like uh, hollywood films uh they have an upcom up and coming one called supernova this it's starring um colin firth and stanley tucci right now and also um they uh assigned me a mentor i did one year of mentoring from um the senior curator of fashion for the VNA because I was very interested in fashion at the time. And she got me amazing opportunities. I got to see ex like exclusive exhibitions that normally you'd have to pay like money for, but she got me in for free. I got to see um, the Christian Dior exhibition was so interesting and I got to learn so much more about it. And uh, um, even though I have strayed from my original career path, which is fashion designer, because of this uh, opportunity that the school gave me, it, it made me, um, realized that I don't want to do fashion design, I want to do acting now. So mm. I'm very grateful that the mm. school gave me that opportunity. Behind the, you're talking about behind the scenes mm -hmm. um, and in media, what, what type of um, experiences have you had learning that have opened your eyes? I'm thinking about like sound production and you know, what, oh. what have you learned? Well, um, just recently, last week, uh, during my media lesson, I had to do a two hour um, practical lesson with um, working with mics and there's so much <laughs> like subject terminology to do with mics that I had no idea. Like for example, the boom mic and the thing that covers it, it has a, such a terrible name for it, but it's called a dead cat. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, it's actually quite interesting. And the amount of like, t like learning it takes to operate like what you think is a normal camera, which is point and shoot, it, it's so much more than that. There's like white balancing and focus and uh, like sharpness and all of that. And it's so crazy. And yeah, there's just, media has taught me a lot of things to do with, many facets of the industry I want to go into. Mm. And would you say that you are now better prepared for a career in the arts? Oh, most definitely, because I feel like now I know how the camera works and lighting and angles and how the mic will pick up my tone of voice. I definitely know how to perform better. Mm. Thank mm. you so much. So what are your career aspirations and how are you preparing for it? Well, uh, my main career aspirations is to become a film director or at least screenwriter as a as in at least being part of a creative process behind making films and TV. And each of my studies have helped me a lot in learning what skills it will require to succeed in that area. So for example, English was my first, like most definite choice. And that told me how to, not, not, not only just how to craft an effective story, but how to analyze it and how to embed and um, uh, and uh, like s identify certain mean meanings and uh, and how they can impact the audience. So, for example, right now in, in English, you're learning mm. about the tragic genre. How has that helped you in what you want to be as a film director, and especially in terms of mm. how the audience is going to, going to relate to the character? Well, um, uh, the learning the tragic genre in books like Othello and Death of a Salesman in English has taught me uh, a lot about how to. Um, Write um, a character's um, changing state of mind uh, as the story develops, and just character development in general. And since most of the um, texts we're studying studying are more character based, it taught it taught me like how to effectively um, write and analyze how characters would interact with each other and how that of um, how that. Um, impact the overall narrative of a, of a story. Mm. And then what about business? Uh, business has taught me um, more technical skills that I didn't think were at first were applicable to filmmaking. It just taught me um, that filmmaking, it's, although it's creative, it's still a business and there's a lot more technical aspects to it like setting, budgeting, set, setting budgets, um, setting financial targets and taking certain risks. And overall, business has also, and my general media knowledge has also given me like an appreciation for the more technical and financial aspects that go behind the scenes uh, for making not just the creative aspects of writing and making it. Like for example, 
Uh, although I first wanted to just head straight into directing and writing, I now have an interest and almost a passion for like um, the more, uh, like I keep on saying, but the technical aspects mm. like editing and filming as well. And because of that, during my study periods and just general free time, I have the uh, ability to make my own short films. Uh, which has not just been uh, really fun, but it's also a great learning experience mm -hmm. and will teach me just how it, it will just prepare me for my future career. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much. So you want to become a doctor, how are you preparing for this role? I study biology, chemistry, physics and psychology to ensure that I have enough breadth and depth of knowledge to pursue a career in medicine. I might decide to um, specialise in research in cancer cells and therefore biology teaches me cell structure and cellular components. On the other hand, if I choose to um, pursue a career in med um, pharmacology, um, then the practical experiments in chemistry and units of measurement become really important. Mm -hmm. Psychology also teaches me the importance of empirical data and how ethical experiments um, are. As in medicine, you have to be very ethical and you also have to have like a strong um, patient and doctor relationship as obviously you're going to be communicating with many patients and you have to have a good like um, relationship with them mm, mm. and also you have to be really ethical because obviously as a doctor you have to be you have to do what's right because obviously you are treating patients mm. and that's their own body so you can't mess up mm. and then also you have to think about what the best course of action yeah. for them isn't it yeah. you have to think about you know there's this treatment and there's that treatment mm. but which one is the right one for exactly. this patient yeah. where do you see yourself in five years time um, I would like to have a master's in civil engineering and work in the architectural industry. And what does civil engineering mean? Um, civil engineering is mostly about how stuff in the in public eyes is very accessible. So, for example, like bridges, um, elevators, like phone boxes. So everything to do with building and construction has a civil part of it. And what you're learning now in engineering, how does that link to where you want to be? Um, here, doing engineering, it's gave me a wide variety of understanding engineering in, like, in, in my future job. So like, therefore, it gave me a wide variety of deciding what I want to be when I grow older. Mm -hmm. So it didn't focus on one thing, so we've done multiple stuff, like working on go-karts, machining, and designing cars, and working on like computers and stuff. Mm. So the facilities here, how do you think you'll be able to take what you've learned here to the real working world? So, over here we have lots of machines and that helped me like hands-on experience, therefore I know the basics of what can be made and what can't be with these machines. As well, there's stuff I got to do that other people don't, so Such I have as? experience, so therefore like, using machines that we have here. Such as? Um, a milling machine, turning machine, um, this is the milling machine behind us. We have go-karts, we have forges, um, we can do casting, we have a laser cutting machine, a 3D printer, we can design and we have lots of help from experienced teachers. Mm. So in terms of the mathematical and, f and physics side of your learning, how has that helped you, how do you think that's going to help you become a civil engineer? What have you learned that's going to help you? So we've learned from the basics onwards, so we've been prepared so we've learned lots of formulas and um, ways to find out voltage and wiring systems or learning moments and like um, tension between like materials and stuff so yeah. Mm. What are your hopes for the future? Um, I hope to be a, a graphic designer in a few years time. I want to go to university to um, increase my breadth of knowledge in graphic design before going deeper into something and becoming a, 
a, a specialist. Um, I started getting into digital um, digital drawing because of um, everything is transitioning from traditional mediums into digital mediums, especially in in, in graphic design. Um, however, I'm currently only drawing people and uh, organic things in, in, in digital mediums, which can sound a bit awkward, you're drawing organic things in something which is completely computerized, but the reason is because when you're drawing organic things, you're learning to use form, and form is extremely important in graphic design because you want to know about how things would look like. For example, if you make a silhouette of something, is it easily identifiable? And if something's easily identifiable, it's easy to resonate with people. So learning these things and, uh, from, from organic drawings will directly reflect into what you do into graphic design afterwards. And one way in which I'm learning these forms is by doing collage because in collage you don't sketch things straight away. You, you can take a picture which is completely unrelated to what you're creating in the end and you can turn it into something else entirely. And the way you can do that is by identifying the color, identifying the shapes, basically the form. And when you combine all these things together, it creates a completely different perspective of the piece afterwards. And from that knowledge in form, I can create silhouettes to, to, to make my logos and know, okay, I know this type of shape will evoke this type of emotion. And that's how I can uh, connect with my audience afterwards. So if a client comes to me afterwards and says, okay, I want to clear, create a logo for a music company, for example, I know, okay, this type of shape will evoke this type of emotion. Or I know, okay, I don't want to go something um, with lots of swirls to make it look fancy if they want to do, for example, a contemporary music-based um, company. Um, so yeah, um, there are loads of different other things which I want to which which I want to learn. For example, like traditional graphic design techniques, I have no knowledge about that at all. And through exploring digital mediums, I hope to be able to get the basic skills. So when I go into university, it'll be easy for me to expand upon that knowledge. Sensational! Thank you so much. Thank you. I learned so much just sitting there talking to you for that one minute so much knowledge so what are your dreams and hopes for the future um so when i um, graduate post 16 i have every intention of becoming an architect so um that means that once i go to university i will need a levels such as art english literature psychology and it so they're just a levels I felt that would be suitable for me. So in art and design I've been focusing on drawing buildings mainly to help me in university when I get to that stage. So for example here I focused on perspective so I've drawn just um, a pencil sketch here whereas here I focused on the whole building from far away. So it shows that architecture is the art and science of buildings. Mm. So I focused on different viewpoints here but it still conveys the same message um yeah and how does how is it helping you prepare for a role in architecture as well so i think also for it it's a lot of um it uses a lot of designing software and for example in architecture you use software such as autocad for example so i think that would definitely help on the technology kind of side mm -hmm. Uh, bonjour, uh, j'ai choisi de vous parler uh, d'une région française qui s'appelle la Provence, et qui se trouve au sud-est de la France. Uh, elle a, elle a uh, une côte méditerranéenne et avec une frontière uh, avec l'Italie. Uh, il est connu pour ses paysages diversifiés. Uh, il y a des montagnes, des forêts de pins uh, et des villes élégantes uh, au bord de la mer uh, comme Marseille et Nice. Working in reception while studying in post-16 has really helped me to gain and improve my personal skills. I balance my post-16 courses 
with flexible hours doing reception duties. The customer service qualification that I am gaining dealing with all ages and walks of life will eventually improve my chances of gaining the employment that I thrive. This opportunity isn't offered in many post-16 schools, but here at Hewins is offered to everyone. This is an added reason to pick the Rosedale Hewins Academy Trust for post-16. Working at the primary school gives me an insight into what the working world environment is like. I work with people in the reception office and it allows me to experience what it's like working with other people on various projects that contribute to running an organisation or a business or a school. It lets you prepare for the working world, prepare mentally and physically as well. It is flexible around your studies. You can work either at the breakfast club or the after school club or you can do both on the same day. At the same time it works on an earn as you learn basis. You get paid for working at the primary school and for supervising the children. My name is Ahmed, um, I'm from Women's College, I just received my grades today, I'm very pleased. Um, I did a chemistry, math, biology and Arabic, um, I got A's in all of them. Um, I go into my uni, thankfully I'm going to be studying pharmacy at the University of Nottingham. Um, it's been a very intense but very enjoyable uh, journey the past two years I faced a lot of challenges from quarantine to you know teachers uh, quarantining and missed out on some learning but um, my teachers did their best uh, Hewins provided me with all the resources I wanted I was able to study on my own and also seek help if I needed any advice on my subjects from my teachers they were always available um, I'm very happy, very grateful, and looking forward for the next chapter of my life. Uh, my name is Suhan. I'm, I'm a student from Rosedale, and I did maths, accounting, and business. And I got A star for accounting, A for maths, and distinction star for business. What helped me was just, you know, re revising every day, doing your best. I'm very happy. I didn't think I would get to where I am right now. And I encourage all of you to continue doing what you're doing and always believe in yourself. Hi, my name is Lucky and I'm from DeSalle Studio College. Um, I studied the subjects Biology, Chemistry and Physics. My advice for anyone that's trying to uh, pursue these um, subjects is that you have to dedicate yourself to your subjects. Give it your 100%. You have to persevere and you can't give up. That's one of the most important things you have to do. Uh, I'm going to um, attend UCL or Exeter and study physics as, uh, and then hopefully, you know, go into theoretical physics. Rosedale Hewins Academy Trust will be rolling out a new and exciting driving initiative, the Driving Trust. Exclusively for post-16 students aged 17 and over, the Driving Initiative will allow students who are performing above and beyond in their academics the opportunity to learn how to drive. At the Trust, we are dedicated to developing our students into young adults and therefore preparing them for the wider world.